and good evening and welcome to this episode of the your health is important facebook live broadcast i am dr mj Collier, your host producer and on-air personality we are live in the studios of atlanta west primary care and we are here to answer your health care questions as always my behind the scenes producer Heidi is screening your questions and we are good to go on this wednesday june 8th let's take it from here okay so let's see who we have logged in any of our regulars showing up at this point we want to greet you meet you and talk about you and if you are new tell me who you are where you're logged in and signed in from and then we will move forward uh from that we're going to start off with a little update uh, about things that are going on sean big time green my man good evening thank you so much sean you are a regular and a full timer and we really really appreciate you you don't know how much it means to me nicole anthony shavers from alabama thank you very much nicole we appreciate you as well thank you so much for tuning in we know you have options and other things to do we'll let carter hi from florida from florida what part of florida will let uh we are here that was my high school sweetheart's name will let diane malcolm hunt hi doc hi diana we are so glad to hear from you janae allen hello janae thank you so much for tuning in as well we are so glad to have you here charlotte blue king charlotte from orlando florida orlando home of all of disney all things and universal you can go and have a good time there no doubt chicky williams chicky from fremont california all right hello chicky thank you for tuning in you are three hours behind us so that is good Sabrina washington from st louis missouri Sabrina thank you so much we are i'm not we, we've only had one or two people from st louis that's good portia bradby good evening from tampa florida now we got tampa covered caseta evans hi from atlanta so glad to have you participating as well sharita sabrina henry we are so glad to hear from you and also from miami there we go oh okay i haven't had anybody ever from milledgeville georgia and we know about milledgeville Riley Riley from Tallahassee, Florida. There we go. Dr. MJ says hello and salute you. Barbara Evans Quinn from M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 -I -I, Mississippi. We're so glad to have you here, Barbara. Thank you for joining us this evening. Carola Ajayi from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Carolyn, thank you so much as well. Ajayi, I love that name. Janae Allen from West Palm Beach, Florida. West Palm, where all the money is. We are glad to have you tune in as well. Thank you for taking a moment to share time with us. Kathy London, good evening from New York. First time on YouTube Live. I usually log on Facebook. Okay, great, Kathy. Thank you so much. Uh, either one works well. They're all tied in. Roxanne Robin. Hello from Harvey de Grace, Maryland. Maryland, very good. And Baton Rouge, Earl Dean Hollins. Earl Dean, thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Lena Malone from Indiana. Oh, I love that uh, picture you got up there. That looks great. It looks holy. It looks heavenly. It looks blessed and anointed. Roxanne Robin from Harvard Grace, Maryland. Okay, Roxanne, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Riz Miller, good evening. Good evening, Riz. We thank you for being here as well. Shirley Cummins, once again, from Mississippi. We got multiple Mississippians in the house. So we have it covered, north, south, east, and west. We have uh, north. We have all the way from California. We have uh, uh, everyone tuning in. So these are our regular viewers. And if you are new first time, please let me know. Say first time uh, tuning in. And I heard about you. How Miss McKeever Bolin, how are you? Live from Atlanta. We are so glad to have you in the house, too. I love that. Okay. Carmelita from Cali, another Californian. So thank you for taking the time because this, again, this is early. This is, uh, what, uh, 3.30 in California. So thank you so much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate that uh, and, and doing so. So we have that. All right. Let's get to our, our, our topic, We'll let We're going to talk about the first timer. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you. And then some. tell all your friends about it. We want everybody to tune in on the second and fourth wednesdays of every month 6 30 we're here roderick big cheat Charity, and sabrina henry first time miami okay we got several first timers here so if you enjoy the show tell all your friends about it because we're going to uh again we want to get as many listens as we can you at any time you can go to my youtube channel ask ask dr mj and you can see replays of this video but also hundreds of videos on various medical topics that may be of interest to you 
We want to make sure that you are getting your health care information because that is what we do here. We're here to answer your health care questions. Now, monkeypox, monkeypox, monkeypox. You've been hearing about it. And let me tell you, we have our first documented case here in the city of, uh, well, not in the city of Atlanta, but in Georgia. The Georgia Health Department confirmed that a man suspected of having monkeypox tested positive for a genetic variation. They did confirm that. Oh, it is a Metro Atlanta man. And he's been isolated amongst other people that are doing that. So the thing about monkeypox, it is like smallpox, but not quite as deadly. Smallpox was a deadly infection. And if you did not know, smallpox was literally the first bioweapon that was utilized back in the day when the uh, the new Americans that, that came here on the Mayflower used monkeypox or smallpox, rather, uh, contaminated blankets they gave them to the Indians to wipe out the Indian population. So that uh, was one of the first op- time of bio warfare that we have seen. So the the monkeypox isn't as deadly, but can make you sick. The if you are exposed, the uh, the the time that it takes you to break out in, in an infection may be from anywhere from five to fourteen days. Uh, there have been cases of, after exposure of people. Uh, breaking out with the pox type lesions uh, after 21 days, but the usual customary say five to, to 14 days after exposure. You have to have prolonged contact with somebody. This is, however, a respiratory virus, which means it's in the air. If you are in a room with somebody, you're close enough to them, uh, you can get it. But prolonged close contact, i.e., kissing, uh, sexual uh, activity of any type, uh, and you know, just being close to somebody, rubbing skin to skin can uh, infect you with the monkeypox. There are actually treatments that are for the smallpox that will also cure and treat monkeypox. That vaccine has been activated and it's been made available in case we do start to see pandemic-like infections. We have not, it is not spreading like the coronavirus at this point. At this point, we're not seeing it. And the predominant population that we are seeing this infection in are gay men, that have sex with men. So men having sex with men, uh, from not the only, not the only. Again, anybody's having close contact. There have been cases of, of men giving it to women and women giving it to men. But the majority of individuals right now in this current outbreak have been uh, predominantly men having sex with men. So uh, the incubation period, once again, 7 to 14 days can range from 5 to 21 days. Uh, it's spread through close contact with people, animals, or material infected with the virus. So it enters the body through broken skin, the respiratory tract, the eyes, nose, and mouth. So if you touch monkeypox uh, contaminated surfaces or uh, even material like a blanket or something, touch your eye, rub your nose, touch your mouth, lick your lips, then you can be infected with the monkeypox. So that's the monkeypox update right there. We want to give that information to you. And we're going to talk about, again, let's update you on Dr. Kai's weight loss. Uh, I think I, I told you I started at 212. I'm currently at 183, 183. And my original goal was 190. Then I said 195. Then I'm getting, uh, I guess you can say, uh, aspiring to 180. I figure if I can get to 180, I can stay between 180 and 185. And I'll have some room to, to have fun on the weekends and that kind of thing. Uh, I did take the plunge a few weeks ago at the last broadcast. And I had brought a couple of new outfits that are, are smaller smaller collar size with even though this is smaller slim fitting shirts versus regular fitting shirts because the regular fitting shirts were really just ballooning out on me uh so those fit phenomenally well and uh then uh the past week i really took the plunge and bought uh, multiple outfits uh because i feel like i'm going to stay at this weight and again if you want to join me on this weight loss journey the lipo drops max the keto max the probiotics and the uh, the lipo cleanse. Those are the products that have been utilized. I take them every day. And uh, again, along with along with an intermittent fasting program where I'm only eating everything that I'm going to eat within one eight hour period. And so I tell you, that makes your stomach shrink. And uh, there are times when outside of that, I'm craving a few things. The other day, I just had to have a milkshake but I only drank half of it before I tossed the rest of it because I was really full. And once you get that full feeling, you have to embrace it. You have to embrace that full feeling and stop eating. If you keep eating, you're going to just get past uh, your, your body's ability to try to lose the weight. Remember what I told you, weight loss is abnormal. Your body does not like to lose weight. Your body does not want to lose weight. It fights you nonstop the entire time. And so there's a preset point that your body has when you have been overweight and that point is controlled by a hormone called ghrelin i call it ghrelin the gremlin because it the levels of ghrelin 
And the more weight you lose, the higher the level of grilling uh, your body has. That grilling is telling you to eat, eat, eat. And so you have to make a conscious decision not to do that. There are times when I do feel hungry. I have to embrace the hunger and say, no, I'm not going to eat anything or I eat something relatively benign, like a piece of fruit, or I may suck on a piece of candy or something. I'm not uh, eating the sugarless candy crap. I like the uh, the Halloween size uh, chocolate bars. I like the Hershey's Kisses. I like the uh, Kisses with almonds, which are my true passion. I like the miniature Mr. Good Balls, the miniature uh, uh, Nestle Crunch, the miniature uh, Kit Kats, all of those. But just one. I don't keep eating them. Uh, just one. And that will beat that craving the vast majority of the time. And I feel pretty good about that. So one good thing about the lipo uh, cleanse is it keeps you going because once you stop eating, uh, your gut slows down and you're not having as frequent eliminations as you might like. The lipo cleanse helps with that. So tummy is flat, uh, feeling good about this process. So go to the website, lipodrops.com, if you want to learn about uh, the products that are available to help you with this weight loss journey. And we'll continue. I'll continue to update. Like I told you, if I backslide, and I'm going to a, a medical conference uh, next week uh, at, a, at a resort. And so I'm, I'm hoping not to gain any weight. I hope to, uh, to maintain and maybe even continue weight loss because I'm going to be, uh, you know, exercising more than I traditionally do. And so and I'm uh, going to be playing a lot of tennis. So we hope that that will uh, help. But I can still enjoy myself. I don't feel like I'm depriving myself of anything. So let's get to your questions. This is your show. We have talked enough about Dr. Kaya's journey. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Floyd Bridges is taking cinnamon good for diabetes. Absolutely. I have a, a, a product called Dr. Cinnamon Capsules that have been shown to have an extraordinary benefit as far as helping control your blood sugar is concerned. Stimulates the pancreas to create more insulin and uh, helps keep your sugar uh, control and balance more importantly. The biggest problem with diabetes is when your sugar gets way too high or if it fluctuates, goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. What you want to do is try to, it's going to fluctuate every three or four hours, but you want those fluctuations to be slight peaks and valleys versus large mountains and, and valleys. So uh, cinnamon is very good for that. There are multiple products on the market. Uh, you can get cinnamon capsules, Dr. Cinnamon capsules uh, on my website, lipodrops.com. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can check that out and they will be available. I think that at one point they were behind in production. There's again, uh, accessibility issues because of COVID, et cetera, et cetera. So, but check and see, uh, Floyd, I like your, uh, your, your, your logo there. We appreciate you serving us as a Mason. Thank you very much. Okay. Lena Malone, what can you do to get your blood pressure down when medicine does not bring it down where it should be? Good evening and thanks. Well, Lena, the medicine usually can do it. If it does not, there are other things that need to be evaluated, such as sleep apnea. Uh, obstructive sleep apnea, where you are basically choking when you're trying to sleep and breathe, is one of the causes of uncontrolled high blood pressure. There are also a couple of uh, neurohormonal secreting tumors that are attached to your kidneys that can do it, uh, called a pheochromocytoma. Uh, that is one of the issues as well. Uh, being overweight, again, can uh, negatively impact your blood pressure. But for most people, the problem is that they're being undertreated. For to control the a usual case of blood pressure is going to require at least blood pressure med at least three blood pressure medications. Fortunately, there are combination pills that have three drugs in one pill, so your actual pill burden is less. But if you also are challenged with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes, you have the trifecta. You have what's called the metabolic syndrome, and you have to control and treat each of those disease processes uh, aggressively and enthusiastically. You can't say, well, I'm going to work on my blood pressure first, then I'm going to work on my cholesterol, then I'm going to work on my blood sugar or any order thereof. You have to control each and every one of those disease states <clears throat> to control all of them maximally. If you don't control one of them, you're going to have difficulty controlling all of them. So it's very important that you and your, your healthcare provider make a uh, a, an agreement that you're going to work on all three of these things each and every time you come to the doctor's office. If you're going to a doctor's office where they say, oh, we're only going to deal with one thing and you'll have to come back and get be rescheduled for another, 
technically the metabolic syndrome is one thing. It is one disease state that's manifesting itself three different ways, high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol. So that needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed aggressively. But if you're not on at least three medications, then you're being undertreated. Some people require five, six medications. Some people require seven medications. It's however many it takes to control your blood pressure. Because if your blood pressure is not controlled, you start doing damage to your kidneys. You start to lose renal function, which makes it more difficult to control your blood pressure. And it's the road and pathway to complete renal failure and being on dialysis. Number one cause of dialysis, uncontrolled high blood pressure, uh, particularly if you also have diabetes. So very important that uh, your, your physician not be shy and that you be accepting of the need. Don't, don't think it's a treatment failure if your doctor has to add another medication because it is better to take multiple meds at lower doses than it is to take fewer medications at high doses because high doses of antihypertensive medications are associated with an increase in side effects. Whereas if you only have lower doses of multiple medications, your side effect profile should be minimal. You should not have to suffer controlling your blood pressure. You shouldn't be lightheaded. You shouldn't be dizzy. You shouldn't have blurred vision. Men, you should not have erectile dysfunction. There, there are medications that will lower your blood pressure. They will not negatively impact your sexual function. And so that is what Dr. Kai uses in his practice. I would never put a man on a medicine that takes the lead out of his pencil because I wouldn't take it if it was me. So uh, that's just particularly when there are other options to do it. But you have to understand the guidelines, the, the hypertensive treatment guidelines start off. The very first drug is one that can cause erectile dysfunction. <clears throat> so you have to be very conscientious about that. OK, next question. <clears throat> what should one expect when taking lipo drops, omega lipobiotic and vitamin D? Great health, Roxanne. Great health. One, the lipo drops uh, will help you to lose weight, particularly it helps you metabolize fat from places that you cannot traditionally exercise the fat away from, like under your chin, across your back in your bra area, ladies, the back of your arms, uh, the inner and outer thighs, the saddlebag legions, and of course, the abdominal fat. Lose the muffin top with lipo drops. That's what we have, and that's what we do. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay. Hey, my glow rat moved a while back and eating food is getting unbearable. What can I do to help it? Rex, Georgia. Thank you. Okay, Marilyn Pope Johnson. One of the problems is once you've had your gallbladder removed is that it's difficult for you to digest foods that are high in fat, uh, high fat content. What the gallbladder is, is just a sac, a receptacle for bile, which is produced by your liver. The bile is a highly acidic substance that dissolves fat in your stomach. So when you eat fat, the gallbladder squeezes like a perfume atomizer and it squirts out the bile into the, the actually the first part of the small intestines. And that helps you digest fat. When you cannot digest fat, when you cannot put a large enough amount of bile in there to digest the fat, the fat particles have a colloidal effect. And what that does, it, it makes your colon and intestines retains fluid and gives you a result in explosive diarrhea. That is called the dumping syndrome. And you will manifest it if you try to go to one of these all-you-can-eat buffets and you eat multiple things, particularly things that have been fried or cooked in a lot of grease or just uh, or happen to be fatty foods. And you will see that. So you develop a tolerance um, once you start limiting those things in your diet. You will find that this is not a problem. Uh, but you have to be very conscientious and plain because you, you literally cannot get through a meal. You sit down and start eating something fatty, it could be pizza. And by the time you get to the second slice, you have to run to the toilet because you're having explosive, explosive diarrhea. So very important that you take care of that and that you monitor. Your, this is strictly a diet phenomenon. You have to make sure that you are eating those foods that you can tolerate and avoiding those that have that effect on you. It does get better as, you know, as time progresses, but you cannot just, you know, eat the things you normally eat. Once you've had your gallbladder removed, you have to slowly advance your diet. Next question. Hello from Mississippi. What did it take for pH balance? Well, the thing about it is, and, and you have heard of people wanting to things like alkaline water. Alkaline water is a great adjuvant uh, to your body's uh, serum because it, it makes your blood pH one that is uh, 
better for overall function, your metabolism is better, but also it, it makes the environment of your personal body uh, unfavorable for um, bacterial infections, viral infections, fungal infections, and even some cancers. So some people like uh, the alkaline water, uh, and you have two states of existence. You have alkaline and you have acid, uh, acid and basic basically and you want to be uh toward that alkaline phase uh, to maintain your optimal health acidic uh serum is not good for you it causes a variety of different problems uh baseline inflammation and and can predispose you to uh higher blood pressure diabetes and diabetes is an inflammatory state as is obesity so you have to make sure that you are addressing those things so again alkaline water is one of the things there are other products as well uh this is where you can use dr google dr kaya would recommend it uh just go to uh how to optimize my ph balance in my body and a thousand products that are available on amazon will pop up and you can see uh how you would benefit from those great question nicole anthony shavers I was told recently that I might be insulin resistant because despite working out and watching what I eat, I'm not dropping weight like I should. Is that the same as diabetic and how do I address it? Well, insulin resistance is a pre-diabetic stage. And if you have a family history of diabetes, you have to be very conscientious about that. Uh, it's usually associated with having uh, a little extra body fat, particularly in your hips and thighs. Uh, there's a syndrome called the polycystic ovary syndrome that is associated with this as well. But what happens when you're insulin resistant is that your peripheral muscles and fat are not metabolizing sugar the way that they should, and they're not responding to the insulin challenge when your pancreas puts insulin in your circulation that helps you uh, metabolize sugar. And when it takes uh, the higher doses of the insulin for you to dissolve the same amount of sugar, that ultimately results in higher blood sugar levels and diabetes. So when you are uh, uh, insulin resistance, that's one of the, uh, the terminologies that can be used, uh, particularly if you have central fat, like I said, uh, hips and thighs, uh, abdominal fat, uh, you have what's called a pear shape versus uh, an hourglass shape, a pear shape where you okay from here, but as you move further down your body, uh, you start to have and hold on to more body fat. So uh, insulin resistance is, again, you can help defeat that with weight loss, particularly decreasing the amount of body fat that you have. And that is where uh, the products like the Lipodrops Max come in very well because they help your body metabolize peripheral body fat. Okay. Should I take the Keto Max and Lipodrops at the same time? Oh, it's you can take both. Uh, and when you take both, you increase your uh, body's ability to lose weight because the Ketomax helps you um, metabolize fat as well and, and increases your metabolism. Ketomax puts your body in a state of ketosis, uh, just as if you were on the keto diet or the Atkins diet or the South Beach diet. All of those are keto-based uh, diet plans, basically where the foods that you're taking in are calorie dense and it takes more calories to literally digest those foods than there are calories in the food so there's a net loss of there's a net loss of, of calorie content when you uh, eat those foods that puts your body in an acidic state called ketosis and that helps you metabolize fat fat then becomes the preferred fuel for your body and not sugar and so you literally start to melt and that is it was found to be very effective weight loss methodology it was not well received by the medical community uh, initially because it was thought that it would have uh, uh, everything from uh, heart attacks and strokes to you name it but that didn't indeed did not happen instead of people's cholesterol going up although uh, they're living on fried foods and bacon and a variety of things like that in the keto diet. Their cholesterols were going down. Their blood sugars were going down and they were losing weight. And everybody likes a diet where you can eat meat and bacon. So uh, it's very popular. The problem with the state of ketosis is you get what's called keto breath. Your breath smells very foul and all of your body fluids. So your underarms, uh, for a woman, your vaginal secretions, for a man, your groin area, everything smells foul and rotten and rancid and so uh it's not quite a, a way to be probably has nothing to do with how clean you are that's the acidic state that you're in so the ketomax gives you uh the condition of of ketosis without you having to do all of that so you can't get keto crotch you don't get keto breath but you get the benefits of ketosis metabolizing your foods the lipo drops uh will help you uh, again instead of storing food as fat uh and fuel uh, which is what your body needs. It helps you metabolize that. Once you start, uh, your body says, hey, I don't need to store any food as fuel, so I'll stop doing that. 
And then after you've been on it for a couple of weeks, it says, hey, Lisa's serious. So not only do I not need to store that as fuel, I can let go of the fuel that I have stored. And that's when you really start to uh, lose dramatic amounts of, of when the inches start falling off. You're already losing weight, but that's when you start to see the inches because it takes a, a, at least a couple of weeks to adjust your metabolism so that you become where you're metabolizing fat predominantly. So uh, at the end of the month, after being on the lipo drops and the keto max for a month, your weight loss uh, should exceed you know 10 to 15 pounds usually. Uh, for a lot of people, the uh, the promised weight loss for any weight loss program is one pound a week, and they always round it up to five pounds a month. And so I and that's by restricting your calories. What we do is adjust your metabolism, and that's why you get a greater, more sub substantive, and substantial weight loss. Uh, uh, you know, anywhere I would say definitely more than five pounds, seven to ten easily, uh, ten plus if you have more weight to lose. So that's the benefits that you will get from that combination. Michelle Williams, can I use products while I'm on dialysis? Yes, you can. None are uh, will interfere with uh, any of the medications that you're taking, and they are not renally secreted. They're just supplements. So no problem uh, being on dialysis shot. That should not have any problems with any of them. Tamika, do you recommend a sleep study for someone that snores badly? Absolutely. Tamika, one of the things we were talking about earlier was that sleep apnea particularly obstructive sleep apnea. There are multiple types of sleep apnea, but obstructive is the most common, particularly if you're overweight, or it's where your throat is basically, you are you have extra tissue there. So you don't just snore, you don't just go, you have, you have a, what's called a tent flapping phenomenon where you go like that. And if anybody ever tapes or records you, that pretty much confirms that that's what you have. But a sleep study will give you a diagnostic capability so that you can move forward. If you have tent flapping due to an elongated, floppy, soft palate, that can be surgically repaired. And what happens after you have that surgery is that you literally start to melt. Uh, I haven't had a patient that had that surgery that didn't lose 30 pounds in the first uh, uh, month or two. Uh, and that's not changing anything else in the diet. What happens is you're getting more uh, oxygen to your body at the cellular level, so it's burning fat just because you're breathing better now. So uh, one of the side effects of that is, one, you're no longer snoring, you don't have sleep apnea anymore, your blood pressure goes down, your propensity for diabetes decreases, and you lose that weight. Uh, so that is uh, something that's a process. You have to have the sleep study first that requires a um, referral from your primary care provider to a sleep specialist, usually an ENT or a neurologist. Uh, then after that, then you're going to have to go on CPAP for some period of time. Uh, but if you can't tolerate it, if you are claustrophobic, just don't like the way it feels, you can't sleep with it, whatever, then you can have the surgical procedure. And that is the order of things uh, as far as getting these tests and treatments covered by your insurance companies. Okay, great question. I take Armour Thyroid and a lot of vitamins. Can I use your supplements? Yes, you can. As a matter of fact, Armour Thyroid, my most favorite thyroid product ever, uh, I think much more effective than the most commonly prescribed, the Synthroid, which is synthetic thyroid. Armour, is thyroid hormone is two types. You have T4, which is inactive thyroid, and T3, which is active thyroid. Synthroid is T4 that has to be converted to T3. Some people do that very effectively. Some people do it okay, but they don't do it well, but they do do it. Other people don't do it at all. And so they have major problems taking a T4 that's not being converted to T3. They have to take very high doses and they get a lot of side effects and they don't necessarily have the benefit of functional T3 or thyroxin 3. So with armor, you have a, a combination of T4 and T3 so that there's no middleman. So you're getting enough T3. And if your T4 is converted, fine. If it isn't, you have enough T3. So that's why I like the armor. And I think it results in much better response and controlling and optimization of your thyroid disease hypo thyroidism or low thyroid hormone status, uh, which can be caused by just having low thyroid production, or you could have had a surgical removal of your thyroid gland, and now you have to be on thyroid replacement. Okay, very good, Judith. Okay, Renee Henderson Gray from Alabama. Thank you so much, Renee. What are the best over-the-counter medications to lower cholesterol? Do fish oil capsules help? Uh, yes, all of your omega oils, and there are some that are not fish oil, uh, like flaxseed oil, but then there's krill oil. There's, uh, my omega-3 product is very good at lowering cholesterol and triglycerides. There are other anti-inflammatory effects 
from that as well. There are other anti-inflammatory effects from that as well. And so uh, that's why I like uh, omega-3 fish oil capsules. What's important with your omega-3 fish oil product is that the capsules are clear. That means they're purified and they don't smell fishy. That means you have a higher quality product. If the capsules or uh, the fluid inside the capsules are cloudy or you open the bottle and you're repulsed by the fishy smell, then you're not going to take that. And it's also not going to be good for you. And you're not going to get as much benefit from it. So a higher quality fish oil, very important. My fish oil capsules, ultra centrifuged and purified, they're crystal clear. They don't have any smell when you open the bottle. And when you take them, you don't get that fishy burp uh, that you can get. Uh, so you take them, uh, you take fish oil capsules by themselves, but because they are fat soluble, they're better absorbed with food, but you don't have to take them with food. Uh, you know, and so that's the great thing about the fish oil capsules. So go to the website, lipodrops.com, look at the Lipo Omega product, and you'll see a great option as far as your fish oil capsules are concerned. Okay, what can be taken to help with muscle cramps? The most common uh, thing that you can take is quinine. There used to be quinine tablets that were readily available. They're difficult to find now. You might find them at like a vitamin shop or a, a GNC shop or something like that. But you don't have to look hard. In your grocery store, you see uh, that they have tonic water. Tonic water, like Baca Tonic, it's the Canada Dry brand or it is Shrepp's brand. They have several. You get a nice size bottle for a dollar or two. Uh, very good. You can take that. Uh, drink about six ounces every day, and that will help your muscle cramps tremendously uh, in doing so. Also, if that doesn't do it, then you need to have other options uh, uh, check. You need to check your blood for your potassium level. That's a very common uh, cause of muscle cramps at low potassium and your magnesium levels as well. But uh, quinine will treat just your usual customary uh, muscle cramps very effective. Uh, unfortunately, they stopped making the capsules and the tablets, but you can get your quinine water. You can drink it straight. You can drink it with, uh, you can put a little lemon and lime in there. It doesn't taste bad, but if you add lemon and lime to it, it tastes like uh, a Sprite, if you will. And that will give you a uh, uh, great benefit. You can drink that every day. Um, Dr. Kaya loves tonic water and drinks it all the time medicinally. Okay, great question. What COVID, with COVID numbers starting to rise again, this is Tangy B. Taylor. Do you recommend being revaccinated or boosted for those who have already taken the vaccination and previously diagnosed with COVID? Tangy B., good news. You don't have to do that. Once you have had the disease, you have been diagnosed for COVID, you have recuperated from COVID, you have natural immunity that at this point could last you a lifetime. You also, if you've had two of any of the shots, that would be two of the Johnson Johnson, two of the Moderna or two of the Pfizer, you are at optimal immune status. You can't be any more immune than you are already. So uh, getting another booster dose is not going to help you. Uh, there are people that have opted to do it anyway. Uh, I would definitely not take more than a third booster dose. And after that, you are a super soldier. You do not need an additional boosting. That, of course, is based on current science. If something changes, if we get a super Omicron variant that's coming out, that may change. A couple of companies now, Moderna announced today that they have an Omicron-specific vaccine that they are going to promote. It's going to be dual variant. It's going to be the, basically the same vaccine they've already been giving you, and they're going to add one that specifically targets the Omicron all in one shot. So a dual valent uh, vaccine is uh, they, they applied for FDA approval for that. Uh, but the uh, current vaccines are doing a decent job against the uh, the Omicron variant as well. But if you've had the disease and recuperated from it, it doesn't mean you won't catch it again. You could, but it would be very, very mild. You probably won't even know that you have it. But if you do, you should not get sick and definitely won't be hospitalized and definitely won't die. So uh, if you, you know, Dr. Kai is, uh, again, medical opinion is you don't need uh, another booster if the circumstances of what you described, that you had the disease, recuperated from it, and you've had two shots. A uh, third booster, I don't think, will give you an additional real benefit, but if you want to get it, uh, you can. There's no downside to doing so. But if you get a booster, no matter which one you got the first time, get the Moderna. It's the best vaccine it's out there. It gives you the highest uh, antibody rates and the longest protection. Okay, great question. <clears throat> Catherine Todd, what is good for neuropathy? Well, depending upon the cause of the neuropathy, uh, the most common neuropathy is diabetic neuropathy. Uh, so one, I would optimize uh, my uh, anti-inflammatory natural state by taking my vitamin D, 
5,000 international units per day. Uh, Omega-3 fish oil will be very good. There are other natural anti-inflammatories such as turmeric and curcumin. All of those are good. You can make uh, turmeric and curcumin can be made into teas. It can be made into drinks. They can be powdered and spread over salads. There's a variety of different ways that you can do that. Let's say, for instance, if the problem with neuropathy is a vitamin deficiency, I would optimize my vitamins, my B vitamin groups, especially uh, in doing so, but a complete multiple vitamin with iron and minerals. It should be part of your daily regimen. Uh, again, I would take the omega-3 fish oil. I would take the vitamin D. Uh, but if let's say it's due to diabetes. Then the primary treatment for the diabetic neuropathy is to control and treat the diabetes state. So you get your sugars under control, your hemoglobin and A1C is down to 80 level that's less than 7, ideally less than 6.5. And then you should not have issues with, with neuropathy. But there are other causes of neuropathy that are metabolic. Uh, that means vitamin deficiencies, magnesium deficiencies. There are neuropathies that are secondary to uh, spinal injuries or you know, arthritis in the spine, sciatica, all those types of things. So uh, it needs to be evaluated uh, and determine what the cause of the neuropathy is. But the baseline, neur neuropathy is an inflammatory condition. You treat inflammation with anti-inflammatory. So regardless of what the cause is, the uh, omega-3 fish oil, the vitamin D will give you some benefit. If you need to take an anti-inflammatory such as Motrin, ibuprofen, Advil, or Aleve, uh, you can do that. Uh, you, uh, that's naproxen or naproxen sodium. Uh, uh, two that I also like are Mobic and Celebrex, Meloxicam and Cefloxabid. Those are great uh, COX-2 inhibitors that give you anti-inflammatory benefit without some of the side effects that you get with NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's your Motrin, Advil, and your leaves. Okay, great question. D.D. Tillman, I have an autoimmune I'm trying to lose weight. But it is hard when you're on steroids. Yes, it is very difficult when you're on steroids. But steroids do not have calories in them, I tell people. Steroids potentiate weight gain. They don't make you gain weight, but they do potentiate it and make it easier for you to gain weight and make it more difficult for you to lose weight. So that is why it's very important that you follow uh, a, a diet that uh, will help control your not only your caloric intake. I think intermittent fasting helps uh, with autoimmune diseases as well because you just overall your body is healthier. Uh, take your natural anti-inflammatories. I would highly recommend that you take probiotics. Probiotics are God's gift to the immune system and autoimmune diseases seem to respond well to the natural treatment with uh, with uh, probiotics. That will help, again, omega-3 fish oil, vitamin D, all of those things. And then uh, for the weight loss, something like the lipo drops uh, would help with that. Uh, the keto max also will be good for it. But uh, again, you got to be very careful and conscientious about your calorie intake and the amount of exercise you're getting. Uh, you got to move. You got to move. It doesn't have to be anything more glorified than walking for 30 minutes. Uh, and I recommend in a controlled environment, such as an indoor mall, that way it doesn't matter whether it's hot, cold, raining, uh, you're safe, there's security in there. You don't have to worry about being on the street. You don't have to worry about whether it's daytime or nighttime. You can make that fit into your schedule uh, to do so. That's really uh, one of the best exercises. If you like swimming, swimming is the best overall minute per minute calorie burn, total body exercise that you can participate in. But, uh, you know, you got to have the concern about the hair issue. If I go swimming, uh, is my hair going to be able to, to do the rest of the day? Am I going to be able to go to work in my, be in my business environment or whatever? Uh, so uh, that's a practical issue that you have to take into consideration. Uh, no matter what kind of hair cap you put on, no matter if you try to keep your head above the water the entire time, your hair is going to be uh, impacted by being in that moisture and being in the water. So you have to take that uh, basic consideration. But walking, walking works well, once again, particularly in a controlled environment like that. Okay, great question. What causes gout and what is the best treatment for it? Gout is a condition caused by increased uric acid in your body. Uric, U-R-I-C acid, is a byproduct of muscle metabolism. And you can get it uh, by eating muscle meats like uh, steaks, uh, particularly if they're prepared in the charred grill manner. All holidays, uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, my office is packed with people that the next day or two days later are having gout attacks because of those things that they've eaten. There are lots of foods that can aggravate gout. It can be something as, as simple as a wine cocktail 
Wine can uh, can do it. Cheeses can do it. You have to find out what it is that affects you. Once you learn it, you avoid those things. Uh, but there are very simple treatments. There are uh, medications called uh, uh, colchicine, which stops an acute gout attack. You take two pills immediately, then one pill one hour later. That usually resolves your symptoms in a very short period of time. Then you keep taking the medication to dissolve those uric acid crystals, which are literally like little shards of glass that are floating around in your blood, but they get trapped in your joints, like your knees and your, your uh, feet and ankles. The most common joint is the joint right behind your big toe, the MCP joint, or uh, uh, the MTP joint, rather, the metatar metatarsophalangeal joint, uh, where you, well, quote, you have a bunion. Uh, that is a traumatized joint, uh, first step, last step on your foot. You get those uric acid crystals in there, it literally feels like somebody has stuck a nail in your foot. It is very uncomfortable, very unpleasant. But you can you can literally get an injection in that joint that will instantly dissolve those crystals and give you instant relief. However, uh, you don't have to get an injection in your joint. You can take the colchicine. There's another product called allopurinol, which will lower. It makes you urinate out the excess uric acid uh, and also make sure that you don't get dehydrated because in the summer heat, when your blood gets concentrated, it can make the uric acid crystallize and you'll have a gout attack. So the two combinations of eating the grilled foods, usually a lot of meat, uh, ribs and steaks cooked on the grill, and then being outside where you're getting overheated and dehydrated, and you're usually drinking uh, things that don't rehydrate you. You're not drinking enough water, so you're drinking your alcoholic beverages. That combination results in an acute gout flare. So uh, you need to stay hydrated. And no matter where you are this summer, no matter what you're doing, whenever you have anything to drink other than water, that can be iced tea, sweet tea, sodas. It can be alcoholic beverage. It can be beer, wine, cocktails, Jack Daniels, whatever. Also get a glass of water. Complete that glass of water before you get a refill on your cocktail or whatever your alternative drink is. And if you get a second one, you get another glass of water and you keep uh, that way. That way you'll be hydrated. You won't have a hangover uh, usually almost no matter how much you drink unless you just really drink excessively because hangover is dehydration of the brain. If you keep hydrated by drinking the water, you don't get dehydration of the brain. You don't get lightheaded. You don't get dizzy. You just get that pleasant buzz that you're seeking when you're indulging in a, in a cocktail of that nature. So remember to stay hydrated. Remember those things I told you about uh, to prevent you from having a gout attack. Okay, great. I'm 51 and I need something to boost my metabolism. What products of yours are over the counter do you suggest? Uh, the great of uh, the uh, Keto Max boosts your metabolism as well as the Lipo Drops Max. Those are two, that's exactly what they do and what they're for. And once your metabolism is boosted, it changes the way your body metabolizes food, the way it stores food as fat, and the way that your, your body uh, accepts food. So you can uh, obtain a weight loss and, more importantly, sustain a weight loss, which means that uh, you don't have to take the life of your necessarily every day once you achieve your weight loss goal, but you can and that will help you, one, eat less. It will help you metabolize more effectively the foods that you're eating and help you maintain your status. And, uh, you know, when we first started uh, recommending lipo drops, people were taking them once a day. But people say, hey, I'm losing weight. So they say, well, I'll take it twice a day. And they start saying, I'll take it with every meal. And so uh, they were losing more weight. This is not recommended by Dr. Kari, but then after doing a little research, say, hey, this is a situation where actually more seems to be better. So uh, we did a study uh, with enough patients to show that uh, taking the lipo drops product more than once accelerated your weight loss and there was no negative effect to doing so. And so we recommend now that you take it with every meal uh, to optimize your weight loss, to lose more weight quickly. And each bottle of the lipo drops has enough in there to take it three times per day for one month. Now, once you're in maintenance phase, you can just take it once a day. Uh, I take mine, I wash my face, brush my teeth, squirt it on my tongue, hold it under my tongue for two minutes, then swallow it, and that's it, and I'm good for the day once you're in maintenance phase. Okay, great question. Janae Allen, my sciatica flares up from time to time. When it does, it irritates the hell out of me. What can I do about it? One, uh, sciatica is where the, it's actually a back problem, but the nerve that comes out of your back and supplies uh, stimulation to your lower extremities 
one, it goes down both legs. You can put your hand right in the center of your butt and punch it. That is where your sciatic nerve is. So one, make sure, particularly for men, that you're not wearing a fat wallet full of money and credit cards and all those things in your back pocket. Because when you do that, you're literally sitting on that sciatic nerve and it will aggravate you, particularly if you drive for a living like truck drivers or if you're in the car all the time like policemen or UPS drivers, etc. Uh, they all have problems with sciatica and it's a simple matter of them sitting on that fat clump of wallet. Most women don't do that, but they do have hips and thighs. You got to be very conscientious of and the surfaces that you're sitting on. You also have to be conscientious about uh, the ergonomics of your workplace that you're in a chair that is comfortable, that is supportive, and that is uh, supporting your black woman blessing, the uh, the buttocks, in a way that's not going to aggravate or irritate uh, your sciatic nerve. So again, anti-inflammatories are very good for that. Uh, the basic ones and the natural ones, uh, turmeric, curcumin, vitamin D, and omega-3 fish oil. And then if not that, uh, anti-inflammatories such as Motrin, Advil, Aleve, Celebrex, uh, Meloxicam, Mobic, all of those are very good. This is a time too. You probably need to get to know your friendly neighborhood chiropractor. Get chiropractic adjustments to help uh, minimize the impact on the sciatic nerve. Uh, you start off getting them often, say maybe three times a week, but then for maintenance, it may be once or twice a month. This is very important, particularly, like I said, if you have a black woman's blessing, you got a small back and a, a, a bountiful buttock and hips then it's very important because you cannot get comfortable. You're 18, this is fine, no problem. But as you become more seasoned, then you, those muscles can't relax in hardly any posture. If you sleep on your side, the hips tilt your spine. If you sleep on your back, the you know the buttock tilts your spine. So you 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 need to be able to get comfortable. Uh, one of the things you have to do is uh, put some support behind your back. I like to recommend rolling up a towel. You can take a towel, you can fold it, into half or thirds, you roll it up, you leave a tail like this that can go under your buttock, the rolled up part you put in the small of your back and you lay flat on your, your back when you're when you're sleeping and when you're lying in bed, etc. That will relieve that back pressure and give you much relief as far as low back pain and sciatic is concerned. There are pillows that you can buy, uh, back pillows that would do that same benefit, but if you want to try it out just to see, you just take a basic bath towel Fold it up in half or thirds. Leave that tail so you can sit on it so it won't move. If necessary, you can even pin it so that it won't unravel or unroll. But you'll find it's not difficult to do your own body weight. We usually hold it in place, but you have to learn to sleep flat on your back. Difficult to change your sleep posture, particularly if you spend all your life as a stomach sleeper or a side sleeper. But you have to do it. It's just the, the way you're going to have to get most comfort and most well-deserved rest at night when sleeping. Next question. Okay. What factors identify as causation of autism in children? Could inability to process ammonia be a cause for children presenting myriads of autism symptoms? Uh, there are so many theories uh, in reference to autism. There have been questions and concerns about uh, certain childhood vaccines causing autism. This has not been proven uh, in any clinical trial to be the case, uh, but there are parents that swear by this. My child was fine. They got a vaccine and now they aren't. Uh, so uh, you can't argue with what a person is living. Uh, so uh, the possibility does exist. Uh, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of therapists that use uh, diet therapy in other words they put people on healthy diets and they they hold certain foods out of the diet uh to for autistic children that seems and that's been shown to have a, a good effect on the behavioral changes uh i would recommend uh food allergy testing because oftentimes you know it doesn't have to be a food that makes you break out in hives or get shortness of breath or coughing and wheezing it could just be a food that causes some irritation that you're slightly uh, allergic to but you're eating it all the time like nuts or like uh, 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 shrimp or some other thing that you could be allergic to or a child could be allergic to. So I would do full allergy testing on them. Uh, I would, again, optimize uh, their immune system with, uh, uh, again, vitamin D, uh, omega-3 fish oils. Uh, I would to make sure they're taking a complete vitamin every day, optimize their nutrition. But autism has been a major challenge. Uh, the frequency uh, it's not just, I, I used to think maybe it was being overdiagnosed, but no, but I think the frequency is going up. It may be something in the environment uh, that we're exposed to now, more toxins or the quality of foods that we eat are much less than they were 50 years ago. 
uh, uh, 50 years ago, a salad that was standard size, six, eight ounces, was fully nutritional. Now it takes the size of a mixing bowl to give you that same benefit from eating what is supposed to be a healthy food because we don't uh, enrich our soil the way that we used to and let it naturally recover after crop season. Now we rotate crops and as soon as one crop is harvested, we go back into another crop and we add chemicals to the ground to, to make the foods grow and look more attractive, but it doesn't necessarily help with this nutritional value. So uh, we have to be very conscientious about where we're getting our supplements, et cetera, when doing so. So great question, okay. Any recommendation for rotator cuff impingement? I work on a computer all day. Thank you. Uh, that's part of the problem, the ergonomics of your workplace. The uh, the standard desk space is made for a person that is about five foot six inches in height. If you're taller than that or shorter than that, uh, you're not going to fit as far as that is concerned. Uh, so the, the placement of your keyboard, the ergonomic pad for your wrist when you're resting. Uh, we're also spending much more time uh, on the keyboards than say in the good old days when a secretary was on a typewriter writing a letter once or twice a day, but the rest of the time she was doing other things or he. Now, uh, we everybody is on the computer all day, every day. And most of the time, particularly we are, are slightly seasoned, a little older, and we can't see them. We're leaning into the, the monitor and our posture is all off. So we're throwing off our neck, our back, our shoulders, and all of those things. So range of motion exercises for the rotator cuff impingement, uh, water aerobics, and there are water-based physical therapy uh, facilities that will literally put you in a tank uh, that's, you know, about two, three feet wide and, you know, three, four, so the water can come up to your waist and come up to your chest, uh, but it doesn't cover your head. And uh, those are good ways to uh, to exercise that. Uh, if there is this beyond impingement, if you have some damage in there, uh, injections uh, starting off with steroids, but then there's a plasma rich platelet therapy that you can get now that will literally rejuvenate uh, the tissues inside anywhere, but uh, the shoulder seems to be one that is very effective in the shoulders and the hips of uh, plasma rich platelet therapy, PFPs. Uh, you've heard about that. This is a uh, uh, really state of the art Star Wars type therapy, but it works wonderfully and give people great benefit. So all of those things uh, are things to consider, but start off with the simple stuff, range of motion exercises, anti-inflammatories, both natural over the counter and possibly prescription and then uh, make sure that the ergonomics of your workplace, since you, you mentioned that you're working on a computer all day, that you're sitting up, that you're holding your shoulders and arms in a relaxed posture, and that you uh, can see your keyboard comfortably. A lot of workplaces now will, will pay for uh, the desk, particularly once it rise up and you can stand up and do, or a, a desk chair that is ergonomic versus the usual uh, desk chair that isn't. Uh, so uh, your, your employer may be willing to bear that expense. If not, it may be the best investment you can make for your long-term health in doing so. Okay, great question. If inflammatory disease dominates roots of diseases, why is the medical establishment not pushing the safe administration of CBD that is known to affect multiple issues of the body? Uh, Laura Williams, uh, the medical establishment is, Dr. Kari is one of them, highly recommend the neurohormonal uh, benefits of CBD oil. There's an entire system that has uh, multiple receptors that are in the hundreds all around your body that respond to CBD oil in, uh, in a very positive way. And this is not THC, this is CBD. THC is the component that gives you a buzz, makes you high and happy. And some people like that, they want that, but you also, because you also still get the benefits of the CBD as well, but you don't have to do that. And uh, CBD oils that are, are purified and uh, have been produced appropriately will not affect a drug test in the workplace. Uh, so you don't have to worry about testing positive uh, for that. Uh, in doing so. So you can't say I'm taking CBD oil if you test positive for marijuana. of those two things are unique and, uh, you know, and can be differentiated in the lab. So that's not going to get you out of that. If you know, if you're in a work environment, you have to be tested. But yes, Dr. Kai is one of those uh, uh, individuals that has uh, discussed the benefits of CBD oil before it was popular. So we're talking about, uh, you know, I started talking about this six or eight years ago and now uh cbd oil you know everybody has cbd oils in the neighborhood they have stores uh in my neighborhood there are probably at least five or six within a five mile radius uh so it's popular people like them and they're utilizing them for their benefit 
I recommend it to my patients, uh, uh, in my, particularly in my lifestyle health centers. Uh, I recommend CBD oils. Just have to make sure that you're getting a therapeutic dose depending upon what your complaints are. You can get, you know, some doses in the hundreds of uh, milligrams. You can get doses in the thousands of milligrams. It just depends on what you need to treat. And so that's why you need a provider that understands this. It doesn't just give you a bottle that's 150 milligrams and that's not going to do you any good because you need a thousand milligrams uh, in doing so. But uh, it works well. It works wonderfully. It is natural. It is one of those things that uh, I like to say people utilize to self-medicate because they find that they get great relief from insomnia, anxiety, uh, joint pain, inflammation throughout their body. All kinds of disease processes are positively impacted by CBD. This is a natural product that I think that uh, it's already been well uh, received and accepted uh, by the patients. Uh, the doctors are going to have to get on board. And this new generation of physicians that are coming along, they, they've lived it. They probably use it themselves. And so they know uh, the benefits of it. It's the, the old school guys that taught me and some even my age uh, that are hesitant to go with something that's new. But the, the clinical science is there. There are, you know, hundreds of clinical trials that have shown the benefits of CBD oil. Uh, so, again, great benefit and recommended by Dr. MJ Collier. Okay. Warrior Child 71. What is good for kidney disease? Herbs, minerals, uh, depending upon the nature of the kidney disease, a lot of kidney disease is due to either uncontrolled high blood pressure or diabetes. So you have to control the primary disease states first. All of the response that the kidneys have is due to inflammation. So you need to use your anti-inflammatories to, uh, to, to benefit that. Uh, very important to control your blood pressure. Very important to control your blood sugar. Uh, again, uh, natural anti-inflammatories. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a lot of kidney diseases, you can't take the prescription anti-inflammatories because they make the kidneys worse. But there have even been uh, newer medications that started off as treatment for diabetes, the SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, drugs uh, that were used for diabetes, but they found that they benefited uh, heart disease and kidney disease. And now they are being independently prescribed to treat those disease states, even in people who are not diabetic. So you have a uh, name brand. So it would be um, Jardians is one of them. And then you have, um, um, let's see, um, there are several, there are five drugs on the market to do that. Jardins is one that comes to the top of mind. Um, and I think it is uh, very good for that. And I think that, uh, again, the primary thing is to treat the disease state that's causing you to have uh, the kidney disease and uh, usually have a pressure diabetes. There are primary disease states, nephrotic syndrome, et cetera, that are inflammatory diseases of the kidney. Autoimmune diseases like lupus uh, can affect the kidneys. Uh, so you have to be, this is going to require you to be in partnership with your providers, usually a primary care physician and a kidney specialist or a nephrologist, and they will help you to do that. Okay, great question. Suggestion on how to live with osteoarthritis. Oh, wow. This is a curse that affects 90% of the population. If you live long enough, you will have osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease. The great thing about osteoarthritis is that it is not juvenile a rheumatoid or rheumatoid arthritis. There's juvenile rheumatoid and there's rheumatoid arthritis. That is the one that, that is really causes joint destruction. Osteoarthritis causes joint pain and inflammation. Uh, not pleasant to live with, but again, you treat it with anti-inflammatories, both natural and prescription. And uh, just uh, there are lots of things that can naturally do it. One of the products that is not an anti-inflammatory, but it helps uh, improve joint uh, function and uh, the health of the joint uh, that contains glucosamine and chondroitin. Uh, then there's a product called DHA that's combined with those two that helps you absorb it into the joints better. One of the name brands that I recommend is Osteobiflex, but there are many. Uh, again, glucosamine and chondroitin, the key ingredients, uh, that is perfectly natural phenomena and it actually has been shown to heal joints where nothing else heals them. Everything else calms or slows down the inflammation. It makes it feel better, but they don't heal it. Uh, glucosamine and chondroitin will heal the joint, but you have to take it every day. And it's not 
a pill that you're going to take today and get relief in a couple of hours. You have to stay on it. But over time, you will get great benefit from adding that to what you're doing. But again, an anti-inflammatory uh, lifestyle, everything from black seed oil to apple cider vinegar, uh, people say help with their osteoarthritis. Uh, again, omega-3 fish oils, the krill oils, the black seed oils. If you're allergic to fish, all of those are very good as well. Kind of oil in the joints, if you will. Okay. My husband has lost a lot of weight fast. He has used lipo drops for like two months. He still eats regularly. He urinates constantly and stays thirsty. I'm a little concerned. Should I be? Uh, yes, because that combination of things, rapid weight loss, uh, thirsty and frequent urination are consistent with diabetes. And oftentimes people will lose dramatic amounts of weight and they're happy about it at first uh, because uh, they think they're just losing weight. And the problem is they're diabetic and they're in a state of ketosis and their body is catabolizing itself. So he needs to be seen by a doctor, get his blood sugar checked. Uh, he, can, he can possibly even do that at the local drugstore. Uh, 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 at a health fair, uh, everybody knows somebody that's diabetic. Just tell them to check your blood sugar right quick and see, uh, you know, what your blood sugar is. And then if it's elevated and normal for a blood sugar is 160 or less in a non-fasting state and 100, between 60 and 100 in a fasting state. That means not having anything to eat or drink after midnight and testing it first thing in the morning. So uh, he needs to be tested for diabetes, particularly if he has a family history, either of his parents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. And that is probably indeed the case. So we will check it out. OK, this brings to our final question. We can put that one back up. What's your suggestion on drinking alkaline water? Is it beneficial? Monica, I spoke about alkaline water earlier. I do think that it has benefits to it. Uh, and there you can buy it in the, the regular grocery store by the gallon. Uh, or you can have an alkaline uh, water creator installed in your pipes in your home. Uh, that's an expensive op option. But uh, I think to try it, see if you like it, you can buy it, you know, buy the gallon in, in your local grocery store and to see. But I do think it has great benefits as far as your overall health is concerned. You don't have to drink alkaline water exclusively. It doesn't taste much different from regular water. I don't think you'll probably be able to tell the difference. But again, your body will tell the difference. So thank you, Havik, for a great uh, show of production. All the questions were amazing. Thank all of our regular uh, listeners and watchers and tune in people uh, to the next episode. Thank you for those who this is your first time. I hope you found it enjoyable and more importantly, informative. You can find multiple videos on a variety of health topics on my YouTube channel. Uh, go to Ask. ASK Dr. MJ and uh, on YouTube and you will see uh, me and lots of questions. You can go to my website lipodrops.com where we have lots of information about the products and you can it will explain to you uh, what your objectives are, what you need to accomplish those objectives, which products will be best for you to do so. So go to lipodrops.com and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Highly take it away.